Hello, I am Tim Doyle and I am a applications engineer out of Chicago. Today I'm going to show you how to connect CPX API and SMS with IO Link to a Rockwell device. I'm currently working with a Rockwell Compact Logix controller. I have a CPX API EP, which is Ethernet IP. I also have a CPX API IO Link Master and I also have an ELGS SMS device. To start, I'm gonna show you how to find the AOIs for the SMS device. And to start with that, we're going to search ELGS in our website. Uh, you can click any of the links here. And then under here, we'll go over to support and downloads. And then from here, we'll scroll down and we'll go to expert knowledge on the left-hand side. Under expert knowledge, we're gonna to go to simplified motion control series with Elm Bradley PLC through IOLink Master. And then we will download this. And this will provide AOIs, this will provide application notes, and uh, this will provide also sample code for you to work with. Since we are here, we're going to look for another piece of Festo software to help us find the IP address for our CPX API. So here we're going to type in field de Festo field device tool. Then we're going to go to support and downloads. And software. And then from here we will choose FFT and download the newest version. Next step is we're going to get the IP address for our CPX API and to do that we're going to open up Festo field device tool. And here our API CPX API shows up with a IP address of 192.168.4.120. We're going to write that down and we're going to plug that into an internet browser such as Chrome. And from there, we should have something that looks relative like this. Right now I have this window open, but we can close that and this will probably be closer to what you have. Uh, from here, we're going to open up the IOLink Master module and we're going to check a few things. The first thing we're going to check is for port 1 because I have my SMS connected to port 0 right here. We're going to change that to IOL auto start. Then we're going to scroll down a little bit further and we're going to do validation backup and we're going to go to device v1.1 backup and restore. And then to double check we're going to go down here and make sure that we have a variant that does not have an OE at the end. And then from here, we're gonna to go to Ethernet IP, Rockwell L5X project. Everything here should be look good. You can rename your device, but I'm gonna leave that. And I'm gonna hit submit, and then I'm gonna hit download. And then you're going to download this to a place that you can find it. For me, that's gonna be desktop. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to go to my Studio 5000. I have a program loaded up, ready to work with, that is going to work with my Compact Logix. However, I'm going to open up a second instance of Studio 5000, and from here, I'm actually going to import that file that I just downloaded from the internet. And then, I'm going to open. I'm in desktop. API EP, open, import, and then from here, I'm actually going to take that module and I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to go into the program that I'm working in, and I'm going to paste that under Ethernet. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that original 
and I'm going to go to the main program. And then I'm actually going to export these rungs. So with control shift, with shift, I'm going to select all the rungs, then right click, and I'm going to export rungs. I'm going to rename that to something a little bit easier to do, and I'm going to just go my last name. Uh, I'm going to put that also into the desktop, and I'm going to export that. From here, I can actually close this second instance of the program, and I'm going to do just that. Then, in the main routine of the program that we are working in, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to import those rungs that I just downloaded, or exported. Then here, no errors or warnings, just click OK. And now we have our CPX API unit connected to Rockwell, and now we're able to talk to the, all those controller tags that we just created with that. And as you can see, we now created these controller tags that we'll be using uh, in a few steps. The next step is we're going to go all over the assets and then we have add-on instructions and we're actually going to import an add-on instruction. Then going into the application notes, which I have under my CPX application notes, I'm going to go click AOI and I'm going to actually click the Festo Advanced. Make sure everything imports okay. And then in the main routine, main program, I'm going to add another subroutine. And with that subroutine, I'm just going to name it Festo Advanced. Okay. So before we forget, I'm also going to delete this rung. I'm going to go down here, add another rung, and then double click that to JSR. And then from there, I'm going to tell it to reference our subroutine. And that should be good. Uh, next step, we're going to open up the Festo Advanced. And we're going to actually drag in our add-on instruction. Make sure we have that green little dot. And then we're going to name our add-on instruction SMS Drive create that and then from here we're going to map out our inputs and outputs and from here we're going to map our inputs and here we are in module 2 and then we are in port 0 however this is where things get tricky uh, we are currently running a big engine little engine with uh, Rockwell and Festo and just to give a quick diagram of that it's pretty much showing that our bytes are just swapped a little bit between the two. So instead of picking port zero, we're actually going to pick port one. And then same thing for the outputs. Outputs, second module, first port. And then from here, we're going to go to port 0 dash 1 instead of dash 0. And then we're going to have to create some parameters. So error code, new tag, and we're going to name this error list. Int 16, we're OK, and we're going to create. Scroll down to read messages, new tag, and we're going to name that read parameters. Create, write message, new tag, and we're going to name that write parameter. Great. And then we're going to go to message source element new tag 
and we're going to name that message source array sent 48 great and then similar for destination element new tag msg destination array and sent 48 and we're going to create that as well and then from here we're going to click the three little dots here and we're going to do a little bit of mapping here um, using the uh, application notes uh, we know that this is going to be 4b 10 B CIP generic custom and then source we're going to click down and we're going to select message source array zero and then the next page we're going to select message destination array zero and then from here we're going to go to communication browse and we're going to select our CPX API module. Click OK there. And then to tell it that we're using IO link, we're going to do comma three and then comma one. And that one is saying that we are in the first port of the IO link device. If we had a second IO link device, that would be comma three, comma four. So if we're using one IO-Link device, we're going to have one through four for the ports. If we have a second one, then we're going to use four through eight. And then from here, we're going to click OK. And then we're going to do a similar thing for right parameter. Uh, with the application notes, we have 50 going here. And then we have 10B going here. And then we have message source array, zero. And then message destination array, zero. And then similar situation as before, browse, select our unit, okay. And then comma three, comma one. And then from here, we should be ready to go online with the device. Um, go through communication, active who, and we're going to set up that map. And then we're going to go online. Download. All right, we're currently in programming mode and we're going to switch that over to run mode. Yes. And then we're going to want to enable our AOI. And then we're also going to want to turn. So right now the AOI has been enabled. We haven't enabled the controller on the SMS just yet. So for us to turn the power on the SMS, we're going to have to turn that on as well. And then from here we have no problems, no errors. Um, right now we have N positions 10, but we're going to set that up to 95,000 because we're in whole integers of um, the millimeters. So essentially we're going to take the number of millimeters that we want to go to and multiply it by 100. Um, we're going to start the same press to 95 as well so right now we're just going to want to move the device back and forth and uh, for that to happen we don't want to start a pressing application so if we don't want to do that we're going to equal the um, start press position the same as our end position um, we're going to keep the force at one um, actually we're going to increase the force to seven just because uh, force of one, the device won't be able to overcome its own friction to be able to move. And then from here, we're going to move out. And looking at over my device, the device did move out. Uh, shift that, and then I'm going to move this in. 
and the device is moving in. And then from here, I can also change this. I can also change the speed of this. I'm going to increase that to five. I'm going to do three for the in movement. And then I'm going to do move out. And I can have an audible hearing saying that the device did move faster than initially before. Um, playing around with this, uh, we do have multiple sensors or monitor tags that you can use for your programming. And I think for now, this is a good start. Um, I'll probably create another video to go more over the AOI itself. All right. Thank you.